This episode takes us back to South Africa's Karoo, a land of vast open spaces, beautiful mountains, old farmhouses, and a huge variety of animals. This is a landscape that I know all too well. I have visited this particular property many times over the years, and it feels like a second home to me. Now, this video was actually filmed way back in July 2016, right in the middle of duck hunting season. So, despite the cold weather, I decided I wanted to set aside a day or two to hunt some waterfowl. To get the day started, I make my way to the first dam and I set up right on the edge. I spot a number of ducks on the water and after getting a range and checking my holdover, I take a shot and shoot right over his head. Not a great way to start the morning, but I spot a teal sitting a little bit further out and I take my time on this one. Yo. So I took a shot at a, at a yellow bull duck. I think I just passed just over his head or just to the side of his head. The wind's starting to pick up now, so it's making things rather difficult. But anyway, I took a shot, shot at the yellow bull duck, missed it, and then obviously the second choice there was the teal. The teal's a little bit smaller, um, but took aim on the teal. Uh, it was moving around a little bit, didn't want to go for a head shot. His head was also bobbing kind of behind him. It's hard to get on his head, so I took a body shot, and he was down within a few seconds, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, this gun's got enough power to put them down quite well with a body shot. The teal's a bit, quite a bit smaller than the yellow bull duck, and much smaller than the Egyptian goose. So unfortunately, we've got quite a bit of wind here today. I don't know if you can hear it in the camera. I might have to kind of call it a day for, for the rest of the day now. Maybe come back here tomorrow morning, see what else we can get. But first of all, let's go get that duck. Oh, hold on a second. There's another teal there. Oh. Very nice. Right, so I'm happy with that. Uh, missed that first duck either went straight over his head or just to the right or the left. The wind is picking up now, so I think it might have been the wind, but also possible that it's me. Um, they then decided to go for the Red Bull Teal. The teal is not my first choice here. It's a little bit smaller than the duck, so I would have rather gone for the, the duck than the teal. Also know that duck tastes absolutely fantastic, and I've never really, I've never really eaten teal before, um, but teal was there. So took a shot at him, hit him in the body, and he was down in a few seconds. Um, his head fell straight beneath the water, and he never got up again. And then, to make things even better, we saw that second teal kind of hanging around there, a little bit further out, probably about 80 meters. Took a shot at him and, and he also went straight down. That second shot, I have a feeling that the, it was actually a ricochet off the water. I have a feeling that he was a little bit further than I thought. I heard two, two distinct noises. Um, I think pellet bounced off the water and hit him somewhere in the head or neck area. So I'm happy with that as well. All right, let's go fetch those, shall we? Thankfully, we've got Lucky here today. Um, Lucky isn't trained at all, but Lucky, last time I was here, Lucky was very happy to go fetch all the birds that we shot. The only problem is that Lucky's deaf, and I'm not sure he heard the shot, so we're gonna have to see whether he's able to actually go fetch those ducks or not. So I really hope you can hear me um, in, this, in this strong wind. Um, but there you go, here's our, our teal, first teal. Um, you can see he's not, not really a big bird at all, um, but he's quite a beautiful bird. It's got the, the red bull, obviously, being a red bull teal, and the yellow bull duck, obviously, is the yellow bull. You don't have to be a genius to figure that out. Um, so not much, not much meat on this guy, but he's still going to taste good anyway. I'm quite confident of that. I've heard teals taste pretty good. We're going to take this one home and cook him, but first let's go fetch that other one. Oh, and in case you're wondering, it looks like the shot hit right over there. So it would have been a good body shot, probably would have gone through his spine, and that's why he wasn't able to lift his head up. He hit, his head went straight under the water and he was down quite, in, quite quickly, so I'm quite happy with that. So here's where I was positioned for the shots, right under these trees. And as you can see, I was a very long way off from the birds, which were both swimming 
close to the reeds over here when I shot them. Now in a wind like this, you have to position yourself so that you're shooting directly into or away from the wind. Any crosswinds from the side and you just don't stand a chance. I'll be honest though, I'm pretty grateful for the wind on this occasion because it blew the teal to the edge of the dam and it saved me a swim in some very cold water. Right, so we finally got that second teal. Here's teal number one. Here's teal number two. And there you can see right on the neck where the shot kind of bounced off the water and went through his, I don't know if it went through his kind of throat or through his spine, but he didn't last long. Uh, so two teals down, extremely happy with that. But this wind is absolutely horrendous. So we're gonna call it a day right now. We're gonna head home. If the, the wind doesn't calm down anymore, we're just gonna relax for the rest of the day. Maybe get some nice uh, time lapses and stuff of all the mountains. And then we're gonna come out here first thing in the morning before the wind picks up and come to the same dam. There's another dam behind me there. We can also look and hopefully we can get something else. I'd really like to get a, a yellow duck or an Egyptian goose just so that we have one more species. Um, very happy to get these two teals, but I'd like to get something a little bit bigger that we can eat as well, something with more meat on it. But maybe we'll have eat these tonight and then when we come back tomorrow, we'll get some more food. Cool, see you tomorrow. Despite the terrible conditions, I decided to take a walk down to the second dam, which happens to be much larger than the first, but alas, there's nothing on the water this time. Well, it seems like there aren't any ducks or geese on this dam at the moment, which is quite a pity because generally, when you come out here, um, you see everything from coots, yellowbill ducks, uh, spurwing geese, Egyptian geese, shell duck and teal um, but at the moment don't see anything going on here so let's just take five minutes to talk about duck hunting um, because I do have quite a fair amount of experience hunting ducks and geese especially in this part of the world so if there's any, any of you out there that are interested in you know getting into uh, waterfowl hunting then I might be able to give you some tips number one you don't want to get too close to them because their eyesight is, is very good um, if you try and sneak in too close, you will just scare them away and you'll have a very frustrating time. Um, camouflage yourself well, find something like a, a tree or something like this where you can be concealed and come from the side of the dam, like I've got a wall here to my side, come from a side where they can't see you approaching, come in nice and slow, lie down and wait for them. They will come in. If you've got any decoys, you can put decoys out. I didn't bring any decoys with me, but I do have yellow duck and Egyptian goose decoys at home. They work very well because any um, pairs or flocks of birds flying over will see the decoys and they'll get the feeling that the area is quite safe and they'll come land in and they'll give you a chance to take a shot. Um, another tip is when you're looking for um, a dam or a lake or something where you think the, the ducks might be, there's certain kind of landmarks you can look for. Um, ducks especially like to land on water where they've got a fair amount of uh, shelter on one side. Um, for example, the, these dams here, on the one side of the dam you've got a very wet marshland area and you'll often find the ducks and the coots and the shell duck kind of in between the reeds where they can hide, where they can be a little bit more concealed from predators. They like to lay their eggs there, they like to shelter there. So if you find a, if you find a dam with a lot of reeds on the edge, there's a good chance that there'll be ducks there. And give, and give them some time, wait for them, because you may not see them when you first arrive. Wait for them, they'll come out and you can take a shot. Last tip I would say is definitely, definitely, at all times have your rangefinder with you, because it is extremely difficult to estimate the range of birds on the water. Um, you think they're 50 meters away, they might be over 100 meters away, and you're gonna miss by far. Get a rangefinder that works well, range your bird, Take a look at the, the ripples on the top of the water so you can see exactly what the wind is doing and then calculate your shot. You probably will have time. As long as the bird doesn't see you, you'll have time to take the shot. Calculate it properly, take your time, get into a nice prone position or a sitting position, squeeze off the trigger and try get either a, a vital shot. If, you've, if you're shooting at a smaller bird like a, a duck or a, or a, um, a teal, um, but if you're going for an Egyptian goose, a spurring goose, or a shell duck, I would say you want to go for the head or the neck because anything else is going to be probably quite unethical. They've got big wing bones, they've got a lot of feathers, 
and the pellets are not going to do enough damage. Um, I've got a fairly powerful gun and I was shooting at smaller birds earlier which is why I was happy taking the body shots and as you can see it put them down very quickly but if you're going for anything bigger, head or neck is the only way to go. Okay, well the weather is looking so much better today. Um, it's a bit colder than yesterday and there's a lot of clouds in the sky. It looks really overcast. It looks like it might rain a little bit later, but there's no wind, uh, which is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, ducks, geese, uh, shell duck, they don't mind the overcast weather at all, but the wind is the important thing. We need to be able to kind of get in close to them and get set up without having to worry about what the, how, what the wind's going to do to the pellets. So kind of nearing the dam now. Let's uh, turn the camera off, start getting quiet, sneak up on them, turn the scope cam on, see if we can get one or two of them. I make my way towards the edge of the dam and peer over the wall, but I don't see anything and so I decide to take some time and wait it out. Lucky sits and waits with me and it's amazing to see how a dog with absolutely no training can be so well behaved. He is pretty much the perfect little hunting partner. Alright so, no ducks or geese on this first dam at the moment unfortunately. And no worries, we've got quite a few more uh, dams we can take a look at. Just spend five minutes here just enjoying the, the beauty of this area and we head on to dam number two. As I'm about to head out though, I spot another teal paddling out from the reeds at the back. So I get into a prone position and set up for the shot. This one's a fair bit further than the previous day's shots, but with the wind having calmed down so much, it's just a matter of getting the holdover correct and the impact does the rest. The pellet strikes him right in the vitals, probably straight through the spine, heart and lungs, and he's dead right on the spot. There you go. That was a good shot. I'm happy with that. Yo, I don't think Lucky even heard the shot at all. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go fetch that bird. <laughs> but it's not too bad, he's right along the edge. Nice. Well, the wind was blowing a little, little bit, but not too bad. Um, it's about 90 meters away, so to hold about 3.7, 3.8 mil dots. So I just went for a body <coughs> shot. Um, as I said earlier, I don't like to go for body shots on any birds that are any bigger than that. Uh, yellow bull ducks, Egyptian geese, they're too big to take body shots. You've got to take head and neck shots, but these birds are actually quite small. They're like, their bodies are probably the size of a, of a large pigeon. So if you can go for a, go for a body shot, Try to try get the front half of the bird where all the vitals are, the top front half, and you should you should be able to put it down pretty quickly. So let's go pick him up. As I'm about to go retrieve the bird, I look up and I spot two yellow bull ducks flying towards the second dam. So I leave the teal where he is for the moment, and I make my way over. However, upon arrival, I scan the water for quite some time, and I don't see anything. So. I come to the conclusion that the ducks must have moved off. As we came over the top, I didn't see anything. Um, I still can't see anything on the dam. It is a rather large dam though. It's about 150, 160 meters across to the other side and well over 250 meters wide. Um, so there could, be, there could be ducks out here that I just can't see amongst the reeds on the other side. I'm just gonna give it some time, kind of wait it out, sit here for an hour or so. See if anything appears. Um, if nothing appears, I'm gonna go home because my hands are so cold at the moment. It's only about five degrees Celsius, maybe four degrees Celsius, but I'm not used to these cold temperatures at all. <laughs> I didn't come prepared. I should have brought gloves. It's my own fault though. Right, let's wait it out, see what comes. Hopefully we can get something. Eventually I do spot something. Uh, the two ducks that, that I'd seen flying earlier move out from behind the reeds where they must have been hiding and they are a heck of a long way off. 
This is officially the longest attempt I've ever made with the impact and it was excruciatingly close. Now let's analyze the shot a little bit because it's not the first time that I've taken shots at moving birds at long range. A few years ago I took two insane headshots from close to 100 meters with a 177 and this one was a similar concept but I had to take the crosswind into account. The wind was blowing from the right but the duck was also moving to the right and so I figured that if I aimed dead on the pellet and the duck would probably end up in the same place and I was spot on. Only one problem though, I got the range a little bit wrong and the pellet passes just millimeters over the duck's head. Oh, man that was close, Oh, the, the most difficult part of that shot right there was trying to get a range. Ducks were moving around, I, the rangefinder wasn't picking up the ducks themselves, maybe they weren't kind of reflective enough, so I had to go for the closest um, bunch of, of reeds that were sticking out the water which the rangefinder picked up at about 130 meters. So I held for a 130 meter shot, kind of estimating where the wind would blow the pellet. I thought the wind would blow the pellet a little bit to the left. I think it did blow the pellet a little bit to the left, but I don't know if I held enough because I think the pellet zipped right past his head, either past or over. So disappointing miss, but I'm not too, too bummed with that because it was a tricky shot. Um, it would have been amazing if I'd got that one, you know, in the neck or in the head at 130 meters. Um, but I think we're going to call it today there. My hands are so cold right now. You don't understand. I'm really just not used to this, this these kind of temperatures. I'm from the coast where the weather is a little bit more moderate. We're at about 1,000 meters, maybe 1,200 meters above sea level. So it's freezing cold. Uh, middle of winter here. Yeah. Okay. Well done, Lucky. Come here. Come here, Lucky. There you go. It's been my hunting dog. It's a pity he's deaf because you would have heard that other shot in... Would have been able to fetch the other duck from me, but despite that he, you know, got the got the first two, so happy with that. So another successful hunt with the impact. It's done its job once again. Three teals in two days. I'm happy with that. Um, got those two yesterday and then that one this morning. It is a bit of a bummer that we didn't get those those two yellable ducks. It would have been nice to get at least one of them, but that's how hunting goes, and I think that that three teals in two days is pretty decent. Um, haven't spent that much time out on these dams, been spending most of the time indoors, it's been almost too windy to hunt, but three teals in the bag, extremely happy with that. They are small birds, not much meat on them, but they'll still make good eating. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.